I hope this video makes you uncomfortable. I look at this as a mirror. You get to look yourself in the mirror and ask hard and tough questions. What am I doing every single day with my life, creating obstacles, challenges, and distractions for myself? Creating distractions for myself because of all of this pressure that I live under trying to make all of these people think that I'm doing it big. Pull yourself together and quit tripping cause you in the process. God is processing you. He ain't through with you. If he was through with you, you would not wake up in the morning. He gonna fix it. The more weird you are is a reflection of how committed you are to focusing on your shit, molding and shaping your ideas and your craft so that when it's time for you to make your rounds, you gonna fly. Stop running around here trying to live up to the hype, homie. I'm just keeping it real, man. If that's what it is, you owe it to yourself to start strategically working to change directions. Most people will resist change. Most people will fight change as if change would be worse than what they're experiencing. It's not what happens that determines your life future. It's what you do about what happens. All of us are in like a little sailboat. And it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your destination, it's the set of the sail. If all you do is stay in little-minded, muddy mud puddles of small thinking, you'll never grow any bigger. And some of you, it's time to get out of the mud puddle and get into a lake. And some of you need to get out of the lake and get into the ocean and let God release your potential. See, here's what's amazing. At any point in your life, you can just decide to write a new script. You can decide to become a whole new character. See, the leading character in the story of your life is you. And guess what? You and God control the script. You can simply decide to be a new character. I'm strong now. I'm beautiful now. I'm handsome now. I'm bold now. I'm funny now. I'm smart now. You're so busy reaching out to your future that you are neglecting what you have been given right now. Oh, God, you are so busy trying to progress that you are neglecting where you are. That's not how you progress. This word is hard on the narrow road. Does not mean that it's impossible, but it strictly means that it is beset with difficulty. You will be pressed on that road and in order for you to say yes to some things you got to say no to a lot of other things master where you are and then you get promoted to where you're going you don't neglect where you are trying to reach out to where you're going because if you learn how to do great things in a small place you're going to do great things in a larger place and you're going to be great over here opportunity mixed with difficulty now sometimes there seems to be more opportunity than difficulty and then sometimes there seems to be more difficulty than opportunity but the mix isn't going to change after expansion comes recession but after recession comes expansion not to think so see is naive and once you've got just a little of this stuff settled then you know exactly what to do you know exactly what to anticipate so you can be ready you can never shine trying to sit on someone else's sun you can never figure out who you are if you're consumed in everything that everybody else is and what they're doing and the moves that they're making. There is a saying that you have to fake it until you make it. Most of y'all have been faking it for so long, you're never going to make it. Most of y'all have been faking it so long, you now believe your own tricks. Most of y'all have been living a lie for so long that you believe your own lies because you're trying to chase someone else's life. There's something in you, in your heart of hearts, that says, 
I'm not going to let anybody pull my strings. It said, I'm going to control my own personal economy. It said, I've got a dream I want to achieve. That said, I am the captain of my ship. That said, I'm going to control my destiny. And whatever it takes, I'm willing to do the work. In the morning, devour something. Throw your whole self at something. You'll never know what you can do and what you can be until you throw your whole self at it. Devour it. I mean, devour it. Don't try it. Devour it. Attack it. Attack it like you're going to kill it. Devour the prey. And in the evening, you divide the spoils. We have it backwards today. We want to divide the spoils in the morning. So we're blinging when we ought to be devouring. See, don't worry about whose name you wear when you're young. Worry about your name. What is the vision for your life? What are the ideas and the dreams for your life? What are you supposed to be doing? Who are you? What are your gifts and talents? What is your ultimate destiny and your goals? God will never give you something somebody else is supposed to have. There is an old person down inside of you that's dependent on you to be smart. It's the person you're going to be 30, 40 years from now. Do not disappoint that person by being foolish through the strongest years of your life. And then when your back is out and your knees are swollen and you can't move around, now you're out there going to get your grind on now? When I'm in a storm, I'm trying to gain control. But God's message to all of us whenever we feel like we are in a storm is not to keep control, but to keep courage. You keep courage and God will take control. He's going to get you through this storm. You just got to keep courage. If you get too tightly zoomed into this one scene or this one moment or this one struggle or this one issue, you're going to miss the bigger picture. God knows where to put you. He knows what he put in you. And he knows what he wants to do through you. How do you keep the faith? How do you keep your head above water? How do you march against the tide? How do you stand up when everybody around you seems to be falling down? How do you keep firm and solid footing when everything underneath you seems to be slipping away? How do you keep the faith? You've got to be born again. And when you're born again, there are some things you just have to take just some things you have to stand up under. There's just some fights you're going to have to have. If your friends judge you for being real, they're not true friends. A true friend will accept you for who you are, faults, weaknesses, shortcomings, and all. And people that judge you are not being honest with themselves. They're just wearing their mask, hoping that you don't notice. Everybody is dealing with something. There are no perfect people. But we live in a society that stresses image. It tells us if we don't have it all together, if you don't wear the latest, drive the latest, then you're less than. This creates all kinds of pretending, trying to impress. And that may feel strong, but in fact, it's weak. If you can't be honest with yourself, if you have to hide your struggles, act a certain way to keep up your image, that's going to keep you from your full potential. God is not looking for the ideal you, the pretend you, the future you. He's looking for the real you. Only quality people. As you think about your goals and dreams, this is not for everybody. You want to build an organization with only quality people. Not people who need more, but people who want more. You want to surround yourself with people that are hungry. People that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow, others won't have. If you do what is easy, always looking for a way to give yourself a pass, to let yourself off the hook, to do what everybody else is doing, the job, the journey of the broke. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If there's something in you 
and says, you know, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. It's not what you are that holds you back. It's what you think that you are not. That's what holds you back. You cannot always control circumstances, but you can always control your own thoughts. Nothing changes until your mind changes. Information does not bring transformation. Conversion does. You can't be distracted by things that are keeping you from your purpose. You don't have time to waste worried about what people think about you. Your time is too valuable to respond to every critic. Those are distractions. Everyone is not going to like you. Quit trying to convince someone to understand you that's determined to misunderstand you. You can't get to second base and keep one foot on first. You've got to let go to grow. I don't care how many people love you and encourage you or the ones that try to tear you down or destroy you. When God has a dream for you, it is your dream. Your dream. You know, when death finds me, I want it to find me climbing up a new mountain and not sliding down an old one. That's powerful stuff. And that's the attitude you've got to have. So my question to you is, what else is in you? What else is calling you? What else do you feel you can bring into this world, you can produce? Or are you satisfied with you are? What you focus on, what you concentrate on, once your eyes are fixed on that, it begins to energize you and you begin to see the possibility of making it happen. What's your target? What's your goal? Whatever it is, focus. Trust me, the energy will come. I don't have time to play petty games to try to convince you that I'm okay. Life is too short to try to have peace with people that don't want to have peace with you. Some of your relatives, you love them, but you have to love them from a distance. Don't frustrate yourself trying to make things happen that they don't want to happen. And so when you look at yourself, look at your goals, there's a reason we are taught judge not according to appearances don't judge yourself based upon your past your past has nothing to do with you right now it's in the past let it stay there don't bring it up front in other words there were behaviors and thoughts you've had in the past that were needed to produce the results you currently have but you need to stop what's no longer needed. Maybe you're continuing a thought or a worry that at one time was needed, but no longer is. It could be something to protect yourself from fear, to protect yourself from harm, or to serve you in getting through a certain circumstance. As you begin to look at yourself and look at where you want to go with your life, it's very important for you to ask yourself a question as you look at various areas of your life. Is what you are doing, is it giving you what you want? If it's not giving you what you want, it's going to take courage to decide to do something differently. It takes courage to enjoy yourself. God didn't bring you in this world to be average. God didn't bring you in this world to wake up and die one day and just be another person that lived and died and didn't do anything significant in this world. You have the right and the power within yourself to choose the direction you want to go. But in the process of making that choice, understand that God is sovereign and when everything is said and done, he will have his way. You're still alive, so therefore God is not done with you. You're still here. God has a plan for your life. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just gotta quit tripping while you're in the process because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're gonna see exactly why it went that way. And you're gonna be okay with it. Pull yourself together and quit tripping cause you in the process. God is processing you. He ain't through with you. If he was through with you, you would not wake up in the morning. He gonna fix it. 
You don't have to lose your faith just because God didn't say yes to what you requested him to do. You don't have to have a nervous breakdown, a pity party, throw in the towel just because you didn't get the job, didn't get the house, didn't get the healing, didn't get what you wanted from the Lord. Do you realize the percentage chance of you being born when you were born to do what you do and you're going to walk around in self-doubt trying to figure out if God chose you? You ought to know God chose you. You ought to believe God chose you and you ought to go through your life with your head held high no matter what is in your bank account because I'm chosen. We don't need faith to direct us when everything falls into place. We need faith to sustain us when all hell is breaking loose. I don't need you to tell me how to act when I get healed. I need to teach me how to survive when I don't get healed. I don't need you to tell me how to shout when I got a new job, a new house, a new car. I got enough sense to be happy when things go right, but teach me how to be happy when all hell is breaking loose. Things are getting bad instead of better. Teach me how to stand when it's raining down on my face and tell me how to keep trusting God when he says no. When you ask God for something, quit tripping. He got it from here. Well, Lord, if I could just stay with him a little bit longer, maybe you don't need him. Maybe he the reason you ain't got nothing now. Well, I don't want to leave him because I've been with him eight years. Well, hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You want eight more years of this? The only reason I'm telling you this because this is how I made it. I just do me. I'm just being me. I stay uniquely who I am because you are okay just the way you are, because you, God made you uniquely who you are. He wanted you to be just like you are. God won't bless who you pretend to be. He looks beyond the mass, beyond the superficial. Being vulnerable is not a weakness, it's a strength. But when we pretend, try to impress people, live for our image, that puts pressure on us. We have to perform. Make sure they think I'm good, I'm strong, I'm talented. Take off the mask. You can be real. What they think of you doesn't really matter. They don't control your destiny. If you do one thing well, you can still dabble in other things as hobbies in your free time. But if you're trying too many things and not very successful in any of them, you won't enjoy yourself, you won't know any real accomplishment. It is this attitude that invariably brings success. You know, one of the things that human beings underestimate dramatically is their capacity to get great at something if they're totally immersed in it. Because you are way more powerful than you know you are if you went crazy, psycho, obsessed, laser focused on anything, even something you're totally ill prepared for. This life here, this is not me. This is not working for me. I want a way out. I, I want to do something else. This job, it's not me. Many people are staying where they are, even though the place where they are is not them. When there are major changes that you need to make in your life and you don't make them, after a while, you become blind to them. There's a whole generation, everybody wants purpose, not very many people want process. I want to encourage you today, every one of us, we are all just passing through. We are all just going through this life, this place called Earth. I love my life, I'm grateful for life, but I understand this is temporary. I'm living for an eternal perspective. This life is temporary. I want to live my life on mission. This is a key phrase now to use the rest of your life. You must learn to discipline your disappointment because you didn't set up the setup and that is not of your making. Now, if you made gross errors and you ran them off, see, that'd be different. Now you're responsible for that. But if it's in the normal course of things, this is the way things are. So you look at this thing called life, it's about transformation. It's, it's about disruptions and about miracles because you have miracle working power. Don't judge where your situation is right now. Even if you don't have any evidence to the contrary, judge not according to appearances. See, that's why you have to have big dreams because your dreams have to be bigger than all your fears and all your consequences. What makes people go back is you dream too small. 
See, your problem in life ain't if you aim too high and you miss it. Your problem in life is if you aim, aim too low and you hit it. That's what you messed up now. You've got to develop this might be the day attitude. All right? This might be the day. Well, why do you keep coming back? Why do you keep acting so strong? Well, because this might be the day. This might be the day I discover myself. This might be the day I get my breakthrough. This might be the day I fall in love. Right? This might be the day. That's the kind of attitude you've got to have when, you, when, when it comes to looking at what it is that you want. This might be the day. If you're not eating or mowing your lawn or thinking or working or living better today than you were a year ago, you've got yourself a little problem. Maybe you're hanging on when you should be letting go. And there are things that happen to us, experiences that we have along the way that prevent us from working through the mental block of acting. And so what I want you to think about, what is there that you know you need to do, that you want to do this, but for some reason or another, you've been holding back. You just have not been able to gather your nerves or putting it off or justifying or blaming. Some reason or another, you just haven't done it. Climb and maintain. You've got to climb and maintain. If you don't remember anything else I said today, remember, climb and maintain. If it's turbulent and there's trouble, go higher. Don't sit there. If the devil is breathing down your neck, he's right where he's supposed to be. But if you want him to flee, just submit to God and resist him, and he's got to flee. I've never seen anybody in the presence of God worshiping and praising, and the devil was able to stay. If you want him to flee, you got to pray and worship. you got to climb and maintain. I want you to live the life you were meant to live. Some of you are not transitioning because you're okay with the life you have. And I'm telling you, I, I, when I walk out, I want to be an example of you can start from wherever and get to wherever you want to get to. That's what I'm asking you to do. What fuels you? The reason why you're so lazy is not because you don't have the ability. You're so lazy because your dream's so small. Everybody sees people who look great who have all the confidence, who have all the self-esteem, who have all this ability, who have all these things going for them, and they think they got it all figured out. They think it's easy for them. And that's one of the justifications that they tell themselves, all right? It's not like there aren't days I don't want to go to the gym. The, the truth is, most of the days I don't want to go to the gym, but I do, even though I don't feel it. It doesn't matter if there's a tornado, if there's a snowstorm, if there's a hurricane, if the fucking world is on fire, the job has to get done. It's about executing regardless of your emotions. You're waiting for all the situations to come together perfectly, and I'm telling you, you cannot wait. You gotta start working right now. To take that first step towards greatness, it's very hard. That's the hardest step we're gonna do, that first step, right? That first step towards greatness is hard. What's a lot harder is what time expires in life. You look back on your life knowing you could have been great. That's something you can't control anymore, it's not out. But if you don't believe you can do it, don't even start the journey, it's too hard. It's a winnable, easy war. But if you don't, if you don't believe it, then don't do it. Every single day of my life, I feel like giving a hundred Every single day, somebody said yesterday, each eat, you gave 120, what you gonna do tomorrow? I said, I don't know, give 140. I don't know, but I don't have days where I don't feel like it. Why? Because I'm counting on me. My wife's counting on me. My son's counting on me. I don't have days to wait. Will there be some times that you wanna give up? Yes. When you get into a tight spot and everything goes against you until it seems that you cannot hold on for a minute longer, Never give up then, because that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. Never give up then, and that is so important. When you're working on doing the things you want to do and fulfilling your dream, and things happen, there are times when your energy feels so depleted, 
but you want to give up that it looks just totally impossible and i can tell you from my own personal experience don't give up then that's when you've got to fall forward when life is kicking dirt in your face don't give up then that's when most people turn back if you've decided that this is what you want to do you've got to become courageous to stand up within yourself to face it and step forward the biggest thing that always troubled me was my imagination. Because it was so big when I was a kid. You know, I grew up poor, but I was always imagining stuff. You know, my mama, once a month, would buy a travel magazine at the grocery store. My father used to be so pissed off. Bill, why are we spending this money? We ain't got, we were poor. She said, Slick, we ain't got no money to take this boy nowhere. But if he can look in these magazines, maybe one day, It'll, it'll, it'll cause him to want to travel. I've been to so many countries around the world because of that magazine. I just wanted to go see stuff. My mama had enough sense to plant that seed. In. It's like at Christmas time, we used to get in the car. My daddy used to take us to the suburbs so we could see the lights. And you know, we just drove around the lights. I could, I was amazed at the suburbs because I would see these big houses with horseshoe driveways where you drove in and came out the other side. So I told my daddy one time, he was riding, I said, Daddy, why don't we get one of them houses? He said, boy, I ain't got no money for that, but that's what I'm bringing you out here for. She said, one day you'll be able to get one of them houses. Let me explain something to you. Because of that right there, I've probably had in my lifetime now about 11 homes. I got four now in different states. Every house I own, got a horseshoe drive. Somebody was talking on the phone with that cord on the wall and got sick of it and said, you know what, man, if I could just go outside and talk on the phone, ta-da, we got cell phones. Somebody got tired of driving across the country and said, man, if I could fly over there, boom, we got airplanes. Imagination is everything. It's a preview to life's coming attraction. Everything you've ever imagined is real. It is impossible for you to think an impossible thought. That is impossible. You can't think something that ain't possible. You ain't that smart. So if it's in your head, you gotta ask yourself, how did it get there? That's God showing you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. The problem with most people is, you think your imagination is hocus pocus. It's really not. It's a preview of a coming attraction. If you react to your imagination, that's where your real life is. It's just God showing you what he has for you. And so they go through life holding back. Holding back on life, not understanding this also, that what you hold back from life, life holds back from you. So most of us go through life, ladies and gentlemen, not giving, and we're cheating ourselves, and you're also cheating life. One of the things you see with people all the time is that maybe they're trying to stumble forward towards their ideal, as poorly defined as it might be, but then they're afraid, right? They're afraid about what they might encounter, and that stops them because fear does stop people. It freezes you like a prey on them, and so people move ahead, but then they get afraid, and then they stop moving ahead. And that's not so good because negative emotion is a really powerful motivator, so we're more motivated by negative emotion than positive emotion. All right, now here's my last point about Phil. Sometimes it's the best way to figure out where you're going. Your life will never be a straight path. You'll see what I mean about taking risks or being willing to fail. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. Somewhere along the way, They've lost the ability to focus on the things they are great at, stacking those promises they make themselves. And the way I get them to break their slump is not correcting their swing or getting them positive. It's getting them to acknowledge the small problems and showing up the batting practice or really getting that extra bucket of balls. Beginning to reward themselves for the extra promises they keep to themselves puts them back in a state of self confident all of a sudden they're hitting the ball free. The word we use for this for short is we call it sensory acuity. Sensory acuity is the idea that you want to become acutely sensitive to whether what you're doing is working or not. 
You don't want to just say, okay, I know what I want, I know what I want, and I'm going to make it happen. This is how I'm going to do it. You keep hammering it, hammering it, hammering it, doing something that doesn't work. We would do this all the time, right? Do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. It's called insanity. You can't do the same thing again and again, expect a different result, see if it doesn't get the result. Does this mean it's always going to be like that? Not at all. Why? The longer you're in business, you eventually find a group of people that buy into you. You eventually find a group of people that understand how consistent you are. You eventually find a group of people that want to be in business with you forever. You eventually find a group of people that like your style. You eventually find a group of people that like your vision, your crusade, your cause, your mission, and your vision is so big that other people's vision also fits into it. But it won't happen right off the bat. What happens if they change their minds? Do you also change your mind? What happens if they say no? Do you also get down on yourself and say, oh my gosh, I don't have the business for me? No. Don't let other people's emotions and decisions and constant changing their minds dictate your mind. I mean, you know in your bones that you're gonna make it out. And I think that's something that was a little different about me. It was like in that hole as advisors were saying, look, just go BK and seven years from now you can walk away from it. I just knew I would fight my way out of it. And I didn't have to convince myself or anybody else. There's always more room to grow. There's always more knowledge to gain, always more skills to perfect. We're never done with the education process because education is part of the path to wealth. Education and learning is part of the path to health. Continued education can turn you around if you're headed in the wrong direction. We need the mental food that others provide. We need mental exercise. We need to open up our minds to different alternatives. We need to learn to appreciate the other side of the debate so that we can strengthen our own and defend our own. We need to expose ourselves to a wide range of thoughts and philosophies and ideologies. You've got to listen to a variety of speakers, read a variety of books. No one speaker has all the answers for you. No one book has all the answers. You can't get all the answers from one person. We need a variety of influence to give us input, to give us ideas, to manage our business, to manage our relationships, to manage our finances, to take advantage of our time. We need a variety of influences. We need a variety of books in our library. We need a variety of tapes in our video library, our audio library. We need a variety of voices. And here's what else we need. We need a variety of points of view. Points of view can be so valuable. Somebody says, did you ever see it from over here? And you say, no. So you step over there where they are and you take a look back over here from their point of view. And you say, my gosh, I never thought from this perspective. It's so different. No wonder you think the way you do. Here's the clue. Take advantage of all that's available in terms of mental food and mental exercise. Be eager to learn. Always be eager to learn, no matter how far along you are in the journey, no matter where you are in your success. Keep that eagerness to learn. Gather up as much knowledge as you can. And then what? Debate it. Put it all on the table and look at it. Dissect it. Turn it around and stare at it ask questions, make statements. Don't take it for granted that one person has all the answers you're looking for. Take their knowledge, but don't take it as the only knowledge. Make sure that what you finally do, the model you develop of strong appreciation for your own style and your own methods and your own process for achievement, make sure that what you finally do is a product of your own conclusion. That's what's valuable. Not to just go do what someone says without debating it. Consider the source and then do it your way. You can take an interest in what someone says, digest it, take notes on it, but then debate it, look at it from all angles. Be a student, not a follower. Building your ambition is a process unique to each and every one of us. Gather all the knowledge that you can. Then develop your approach as a product of your own conclusions. Your own conclusions, 
not someone else's conclusions, your own conclusions. You can't fall for other people's philosophies. They may not be right. As you collect knowledge, you must sort through it and find out what's valuable. Then you can develop your own philosophy. And your own philosophy becomes the most important of your guidance systems, one of your guiding lights. So develop your own plan, lest you get into trouble with someone else's. And debate the plans of others, the philosophies of others, the achievement styles of others, the way others appreciate themselves. Debate all this. Why? Because it affects everything. The value you place on your plan, the value you place on yourself, the value you place on life in general affects everything around you. It even affects how you respect time, the 24 hours a day given to each of us to do with as we please. There's a connection between appreciating yourself and appreciating and respecting time. People who appreciate themselves understand and respect the use of time. Here's what I call the best kept secret of the rich. Interesting discovery that I made one day. I couldn't believe it when I found out that rich people have about 24 hours a day and poor people have about 24 hours a day. Wouldn't that drive you mad until you found out what the difference was? I'm telling you the difference is in the management of the time. A few simple disciplines practiced every day and your whole life can change. Your future can change, your income can change. When they was living, they told me one time, they was sitting up watching TV. My daddy looked at my mama and said, Bill, he called my mama Bill and said, can you believe that this little boy we had on TV? She said, Slick, I can't believe this. I used to send my daddy $5,000 a week. You know, when I first got on TV, I was making 55000 a week, so I sent my mama there 5000 a week. When I got into Kings of Comedy, my father was still living. I showed my daddy one time how much money I made. He said, boy, it take me four years to make this kind of money. So I was able to give them something with my life. I always wanted God to just lift me up so before my mom and them left this world, I could give them something. I bought them everything, man, houses, cars, furniture. I bought them everything I could think Try. I'm 62 years old. I still want them. Be proud of me. I'm still hoping that they in heaven watching me. And they see me turn into something. That's all I ever wanted. It was in my imagination to take care of them. Everything that's in your imagination, God gonna make it come true for you. You just got to believe that. God make dreams come true. He take poor kids with speech impediments put them all over TV. If God can do that for me, explain to me how he can't do it for you. You just got to believe, man. Don't ever give up and keep believing because God is real. Don't you listen to nobody telling you God ain't real. You can learn from negative as well as positive. The Bible is such a great book because it is a collection of human stories on both sides of the ledger. One list of human stories is called examples, do what these people did. And the other list of human stories is called warnings, don't do what these clods did. What a wealth of information, what to do and what not to do. I think it also means, however, that if your story ever gets in somebody's book, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. All the successful people I know and work with around the world are good readers. They just read, read, read. They are so curious that they are driven to read because they just have to know. It is one of the things they all have in common. Here's a good phrase. All leaders are readers. And they use cassette programs too, especially while they're in the car or during other times when they can't read. Cassettes can help all of us easily pick up new ideas and new skills. Did you know there are cassettes and books on how to be stronger, more decisive, a better speaker, a more effective leader, have a better effect on other people, become more loving, develop personality, 
get rich, develop influence, become sophisticated, and people don't use them? How would you explain that? Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and told how they did it on cassettes like this and people don't want to listen? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. He says, well, yeah, if you work where I work, by the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to have a bite to eat, watch a little TV and get to bed. You can't stay up half the night and read, read, read. And this is the guy that's behind on his bill. He's a good worker, hard worker, sincere. But remember, you can be sincere and work hard all your life and wind up broke, confused and embarrassed. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good reader, a good listener. At least you could hear a good cassette on the way home, right? Now, you don't have to read or listen to educational cassettes half the night. Although if you're broke, it's a good place to start. But here is all I ask, just 30 minutes a day. That's all. Stretch it to an hour if you can, but at least 30 minutes. Hear or read something challenging, something instructional, at least 30 minutes a day. And here's the next key, every day, don't miss. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes. Hey, you can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some ideas, examples, and inspiration. There's a Bible phrase that says, humans cannot live on bread alone or food alone. It says the next most important thing to bread is words. Words nourish the mind, words nourish the soul. Humans have to have food and words to be healthy and prosperous. Make sure you have a good diet of words every day. I told my staff one day, some people read so little, they have rickets of the mind. And also remember to properly feed the mind, you must have good balance. Don't just read or listen to the easy stuff. You can't live on mental candy. Here is a thought. Why not call good books and cassettes tapping the treasure of ideas? That's it. Tapping the treasure of ideas like you're doing with this program. And if somebody's got a good excuse for not tapping the treasure of ideas for at least 30 minutes every day, or spending the money and getting the books and cassettes, I'd like to hear it. Invest the money, get the cassettes and books. The best money you can spend is money invested in your self-education. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to investing in your own better future. Let me tell you the problem with your imagination. The problem with your imagination is you tell it to the wrong people. If you want to kill a big dream, tell it to a small-minded person. Do you know how many times God has showed you something in your imagination that you knew was just for you? You were so excited when he came to you, you went and you shared it with your family and friends. You know what they did? They shot it down. You know why they shot it down? Because they couldn't see it. You know why they couldn't see it? Because God didn't show it to them. He showed it to you. He showed you the evidence of things not seen. See, they might love you, but they don't know what God gonna do for you. My teacher thought she was sparing me. Take your stupid self up there and try to audition for TV with this stuttering problem. She thought she was saving me. She might have even meant well, but she didn't know. That. See, your mama and them, your cousin and them, your friends, they don't know. See, you got to be careful when you share your imagination with small-minded people. Nobody else can see your imagination but you. But see, it ain't just you imagining stuff. It's your God showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you. If I'm manipulating you, I'm trying to get you to do something. If I'm leading you, I'm trying to get you to do something. And many of the tools are very similar. So what's the difference between me leading you and me manipulating you? It's very easy for me to answer that question. If I'm manipulating you, I'm trying to get you to do something that's going to benefit me. If I'm leading, I'm trying to get you to do something that's going to benefit you, that's going to benefit the team, that's going to benefit the mission. 
So for me, those are those are too easy. Those are too easy. It's it's real obvious. And, and by the way, if I'm a manipulator, I can get away with that for a little while. But eventually, you're going to look at me for what I am. You're going to see that the maneuvers I'm making, the tools I'm using, I'm utilizing those tools for my own benefit. And as soon as you see that, you you won't fully support it. You you won't. The same goes for when I'm trying to make you do something good for yourself and for the team. You're going to see that too, and you're going to say, "He's he actually cares about you. That's what he's doing." This and when you know I care about you, you'll do anything. For you. I mean, that's what it boils down to. Oh, I want to give you hard criticism. How do I give you hard criticism? The first thing I have to do is make sure that you understand I care about you, which is not which is not easy to do, and it's not always obvious. But if you know. That more than anything else, what I want is for you to be successful. When I say, "Hey, hey Tom, I'm looking at the outcome of the last project, and you were three weeks past the time. I think there's some things that we can do to kind of make you a little bit more efficient in leading these things. If you know that my number one thing is that I care about you, you're gonna be all ears to an extent. Because guess what percentage of the world is truly open for? Criticism. Oh, it's tiny. <laughs> There's so few people that are truly open to criticism.